Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm going to continue to work on some reels that Ron had sent in, Ronald. And uh, this one is one I haven't done. At least I don't think I've done. This is an Okuma. It's the Convector CN20D. Boy, there's a lot of letters in there. I guess they were going to try and use all the ones in the alphabet, but that's the model, the CN20D. It's a line counter. And uh, we're going to show you how to take this apart, how to service it, and how to keep this one fishing uh, for the future. So, I like to test all the features and functions, make sure that the, the uh, spool is turning, the line guide is working, the drags are holding, the free spool release is working, the line counter is counting, and uh, that way I know that if everything is in, in good stead, when I go to service it, I'm not overlooking anything. And if I notice somewhere during the, uh, the service that something is amiss, well, then I try to uh, make sure that it is corrected as part of the service. Well, we're going to start by actually doing something that I don't do much, and that is to, to take the uh, non-gear side off first. This has got kind of an unusual setup, at least to me, of the line guide mechanism in that it's floating. It doesn't, uh, doesn't have a C-clip or anything holding it in there. So there's a gear on the back of this one. It drives from the idler gear to the worm gear, and it just kind of lifts. So I want to make sure that we service that one before we take the other side off. That way I don't risk having that gear pop off and float around in that side case. I guess that's only something you could learn well if you've done a few of these. I took the four side plate screws out. They have a tapered head on them, and uh, they're all the same size. So I'm going to put them into my parts tray. but. We will close this up before we uh, go much further. We remove that side plate, just inspect it. You've got uh, at least two ball bearings in this reel that I know about. This is one of them, it's on the side plate. I'm going to oil that. You can see this is the transfer gear or the idler gear. It's going to work off the spool on the back of the uh, spool. There is a drive. That'll turn to one side and then it's going to work this small gear on the other side. I'm going to remove the spool at this point. This is the gear I was talking about. It just floats there. There is no C-clip or anything holding it on. So I just wanted to make sure that everything was clean inside, that that gear was okay, and then we're going to just put this side plate right back on. A little bit of oil into your uh, bearing, cleaning it up. Snapping it back on. We're going to go put those on. Yes, I did intentionally leave that spool off because, well, we're going to service the rest of this reel. Kind of working backwards on this one because of that floating gear. I've just had an issue from time to time where I've serviced the product and uh, had that one fall off because the line gear worm drive moved. Well, while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe, please hit the notification button. This is a channel that's focused on teaching you how to do it yourself, how to fix reels, and how to give them a second chance, hence the name Second Chance Tackle. I hope that uh, you, you all enjoy it, and if you do, please uh, use that notification button. Work on all kinds of reels. Today we're working on a, uh, a lake or an ocean uh, type reel. Tomorrow it might be a bait caster, the next day it might be an ultralight, and uh, throw a spinning reel in there as well. I have a deep library if uh, you're looking for information on how to service a particular reel. Chances are you'll find it there or you'll find one that's close. And if you don't, well, shoot me a note in uh, the comments section. If I can help you with that, I'll try to do that. All right, now we're going over to the what I call the business end. We've taken off the uh, handle nut cap and the tie-down screw. And when I take the pieces off, I put them into a parts tray. This is a fast food container acting as a parts tray. And uh, don't care what you use to order the uh, parts that you take off and keep track of them and know where they go. But uh, if you don't have a system, I would recommend getting one. And one of the things that's critical to that system is taking pictures. So I suggest that you take pictures when you get to critical points in the disassembly process. That way you can know where they go when it's time to reassemble. So for example, we've just taken off the star adjuster. Then there's a thick spacer, 
And then there's a tension washer. I don't know if we'll get it out this way or if we'll have to get it out when we remove that. But uh, there's a little tension washer here. And that's the order they go back in on it. So I put them in a the cup that way so that I don't get it confused. Well, there's four screws that hold the other side of the reel in. So let's take the gear side off now. It's a Phillips head screwdriver. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other side plate. It's just good practice when you take these screws out to make sure that they're all the same. And now on this one, I know they're all the same. But uh, you may not uh, know a reel. And you may be working on a Shimano. Or uh, we just worked on a Daiwa 27H, where uh, Ronald also sent that reel in. And well, one of the side plate screws was shorter. So it's just good practice to take them all out. And if you find that one's longer or one's shorter, then what you want to do is you want to mark the location for that so that you put it in the right place on the way back. That one just got away from me. Well, that happens to the best of us. I happen to have a, uh, a hard floor below. It's a roller mat that's used on office furniture, and you can usually find these things pretty quick. But just a word of caution, find it sooner rather than later. Don't leave it there and say, well, I'll come back and find it. That rarely works. Okay. Let's see if we can move this. Oh, we can't. We don't have a spool in there. All right, let's remove the, uh, uh, the gear side then. Here's what I like to do because this is not being held in very tight. I do like to keep my finger with pressure on that there. We're going to roll this over and before we do anything else, we're going to service the pawl just so that we don't forget that. So I'm just working in uh, opposite directions. For those of you accustomed to watching me, I usually go over and do this last. But just because of the fickle nature of that darn uh, worm gear there, we're going to do it first. The cap is off. There's a little shim washer inside the cap. Sometimes it'll stick to the pawl. And you just want to work the pawl out of there. Usually a gentle tap will just bring it down. And when it works its way enough that you can grab it with the pliers or something, or maybe your fingernails or something, just use that to do that. You want to remove that cylinder because you have to check the shoulders. And there's some grease on there. You want to make sure that that gets cleaned off. If you don't clean that stuff off, what's going to happen is it's not going to track properly in the worm gear. And when it's tracking poorly, well, you're going to get disruptions. Sometimes it'll hang up. Sometimes it'll be so dramatic that uh, it'll just break a tooth off. And that's the other thing you want to check the teeth on these. Notice I kept it in the pliers because I want to put it right back in. So that we don't, uh, don't lose that. With the pawl seated, you want to oil that cavity. And you want to get some oil on that uh, worm gear. And notice I'm holding that uh, assembly in so that it doesn't slide. Like I said, I've had experiences where this thing's just slipped off. And I'm searching for that little... Uh, transfer worm gear and it's just an inconvenience to do and keeping the pressure just make sure that the line guide rolls and it does while I have the case open I'm also going to take a little scrubby pad just your basic kitchen scrubby scotch bright or whatever it is and uh, just clean up the side cases here I'm using a, uh, a rod and reel cleaner for this I find that it's uh, kind of dual purpose, then it's an, always a good thing to do. I don't like uh, working on fishing reels with line. Having said that, if you uh, are doing an annual surface, you probably should remove the line. And now I'm just going to go grab a rubber band here so that I can hold the line to the spool when I reinstall and it doesn't get caught in the side plates. That's probably my number one reason why I don't like working with the line, more times than not, it gets trapped. All right, so we'll just put a rubber band on there. We're going to use fishing reel grease. I use pen precision reel grease. We're going to put a little bit of grease onto that drive and onto the stud. We'll put it on this side, but that comes later. All right, and just put that spool back in there. 
and we're going to set that whole assembly off to the side. Well, here's what everybody probably came for. It's how do I uh, how do I work on this side, right? Well, let's go from uh, beginners basics to the other side. Don't touch your line guide unless it's broken and you're replacing it. These are very difficult to get the shafts for. All I do recommend is a drop of oil on both sides where the gears are. Next up, we have a C-clip holding a bridge on. And we have two screws. Note that they're different screws. And also notice you have a screw up here holding the jack in. Good time to take a picture. If you are unfamiliar with this reel, that picture will help you immensely. There's a lot of kind of funny little things that go on in this one. And uh, they don't become funny if, uh, if you're searching for where to put these parts. Let's just call it unique rather than funny. How's that? All right, so I took the C-clip off that's holding the gear post on. I've taken the flat-headed screw, which is to the right, and I'm taking the long threaded screw on the left here, and this long threaded screw holds your anti-reverse dog on. This reel does have an anti-reverse clutch, so your anti-reverse dog is kind of a fail-safe there. Pull this off now. That's your bridge. Take a picture. Now this, I just popped that out a little bit when I was taking the bridge off, but notice that your anti-reverse dog, when properly set, is facing low. That way. It's not properly set, but there you go. It's facing low. Notice you have a bushing on here. That bushing has two flat sides. That'll become important later. And then we have the jack. Now, I leave the anti-reverse dog and the jacks springs on, but if they do fall off, notice the location. For the anti-reverse dog, it's over here, and there's a post up here for that, uh, that jack. All right, I'm going to pull this little spacer out here that's holding that anti-reverse dog in place, and then I'm just going to move the anti-reverse dog out of the way. If it's dirty, go ahead and clean it up most of the time it's not and you can just flip it off to the side there you do not need to remove that or the spring I'm going to do the same with the jack the free spool piece it's got a very small screw in it it's a uh, Phillips head as well that goes into my parts tray so that I don't lose that same with that little uh, piece now I'm going to pull the Spool jack up. I'm going to do the same thing, just going to lay it over to the side there. There's a little bit of dirt on that side, so I'll clean that out while I'm at it. But I'm going to leave that spring attached. Okay, here's the business part of the reel then. We have the yoke and the pinion gear, and we have the, the main gear stack. You're going to push the main gear stack out. Out came the anti reverse clutch. There's a little seal washer that goes between the spacer and the uh, clutch. We're just going to clean the inside of this cavity. There is some dried grease in there, so let's get that dried grease out. I'm going to use a screwdriver as a scraper. And there's a bushing on the back of this one. I scraped out the dried grease. We're just going to use a little bit of penetrating oil to clean up the rest of that. I'm going to use a cotton swab, aka a Q-tip, and I'm just going to make sure that that is clear. Now you saw me put that anti-reverse clutch back in. If you have yours out, note that the plastic side of that anti-reverse clutch faces in on the reel, and that the other side is a metal side that faces out. All right, let's clean off the yoke and the pinion gear. This reel kind of felt like it needed some basic greasing, and that's exactly what it does need. Check all of the teeth on the pinion gear. Make sure that they're clear. They are. There's no grease or anything left in that, and uh, that they're not chipped, broken, or cracked, or in any other way distorted. If you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, please leave them in the comment section. I do try to answer them. And uh, if you're stuck on something, well, I, I try to get you unstuck. Okay, this is the way it goes back in. There's a slot for the spool that faces out. 
is two ramp sides of it facing out. We didn't remove them, but there's two springs on the inner case here. Those are the springs for the yoke, so if you uh, if you have them out, that's where they go. I'm going to put that over the top, press down, then I'm just going to bring that jack up and back in again. That's all you needed to do on this service side here. Then we want to go to our parts tray, get that... Uh, oh, I'm going to leave that out, I can't do that yet. It's been a while since I worked on one of these, so let's leave the your arm off there. Got to put the main gear back in. Let's go over to the main gear section then. We have a, a washer. Make sure that's clear. We have a click ratchet. And then we have the gear stack. So clean off your gear stack. And this, uh, this reel has hard washers in it. So you don't need to do anything from a maintenance standpoint with that other than make sure the cavities are cleared. They're nice and shiny and bright. It's okay to have tarnish on them, but it's not okay to have dried grease. So if you're finding out you got dried grease and the like, well, you've got to get that cleaned up before you go much further. I use an artist brush with the, uh, the greases when I put that on. The artist brushes tend to hold uh, well, and they don't seem to have hairs that pop out all the time. All right, there's a couple of different setups here now, so it's important to pay attention to which washers you have. This is a traditional six dry washer setup. The bottom washer, metal wise, is flat. The top washer has a dome on it. Other than that, they kind of look the same. All right, as I mentioned, these are hard. You don't do anything with them because they can't absorb anything. There's no sense putting anything like a dry grease net on there because, well, they won't absorb them. I just put the first washer in there correctly. All right, there's a big washer or a hole with a big washer in it. That's the first one because it's got to clear that shoulder. And we put the first metal one, that's called a keyed washer. And we can put the second one on. Then we put the middle one is the eared washer. They go in the slots of the gear, like that. And our top one goes on. Then that bell washer, which has got a little tension in it, goes on. Then you have that clear plastic one as the spacer that's next. And then the spacer that goes inside the anti-reverse clutch is the last piece on. Make sure that's dry. Anti-reverse clutch is run by friction. So if it's got grease on it, it's going to cut down on the friction. It's going to be no good. All right, let's take the main gear. We'll put that back in then. Okay, so the pinion gear was getting in the way, so I've moved everything over to the side. We've put the main gear back in. We're going to take our pinion gear and, and put that on the posts over the springs. And we're going to make sure that it meshes with the main gear. Then we can flip that jack over. We want to align that to the hole on the free spool release or eccentric. And then come on over and put that small screw in. Now, why do I know so much about this reel? This shares components, interestingly enough, with, or design at least, with the Shakespeare Tidewater. So if you have worked on a Tidewater in the past, you'll know that you can pretty much navigate this one. All right, I'm going to put that small screw in to hold the jack down and enable the free spool. Now this is one where the pictures help, because what you have now is you have that jack facing in the wrong direction, the anti-reverse dog. And that's just because we flipped it out of the way. It's real easy to just think that's the way it goes when you go to reinstall, but it's not. It goes down like that. And we're going to put that bushing on next. And here's the fun one with this. I guess I said there's a couple of fun points with this thing. One of the fun points with this thing is that this bushing has two flat sides on it. You need to find those flat sides because this is not an oval here. It's a flat side that's going to hold that bushing in place. So find the two flat sides. They go this way in the lineup. The part with the dimple goes under. And you should be able to get this over that. 
you've done that right there we go and then you want to make sure that you snap into the anti-reverse uh, collar that was there that you're on top of the screw there and that you have room for the c-clip here if you have all of that then you've done it correctly i'm going to take that flat screw and go to the outside here put that in so like I said, it's not particularly difficult reel to work on, but it's just one of these things that you have to kind of learn what little tricks go along with it if you want to do it efficiently, like that worm drive. That's a, a nightmare. I don't know why they didn't hold that worm drive in with a C-clip, but they don't. And so you get to figure it out after a while. All right, the long screw goes through that collar that's holding your anti-reverse. Now there's a washer that belongs on the bridge underneath the C-clip. And then the clip goes on. I said C-clip, I guess that's an E-clip. I just seem to call them all C-clips. Then I'm going to use the pliers to pull that down. There we go, that's set. And if you like right now, you can give it a run. Make sure everything is working right, not binding or anything. It's time to reinstall this. Now we put this the grease onto the spool already. Just match it up. Some pretty big cavities there. When you do that, make sure that all of the seams where that side plate is going also match up, that there's no gaps in there or there's no tension or anything like that that becomes a problem. We'll go ahead and put the screws in. I like to put these in in opposing directions. So if I got one on that side, I'm going to come all the way over to this side for the next one. And two more, and this will be completed from a gear side service standpoint. And we'll just put the rest back on. We'll give it a final test. Get this one back to Ronald and wish him great fishing. One more. So these are pretty popular. They're moderately priced. They're no Kuma product and they've had some nice ones. And uh, these certainly stand the test of time. There's one of the things that's nice about this is you don't get much corrosion on these because of the, the casing and design. All right, we have the star adjuster comes on next. Remember what we said there was this, this tension washer went first. That's a curved washer. I tend to put it where the outside wings are facing up. Then we have the spacer. And we have a little bit of tarnish or whatever on the star adjuster, so we'll just clean that off with the rod and wheel cleaner as well. we'll go ahead and put that back on. So I, there's a couple of the Okumas in this line. This is the convector. There's also a classic. They pretty much share the same designs underneath. There's a spacer that goes on to there before the handle goes on. And the handle goes on. Same thing here, we can clean that up. I find that this, this little scrubby pad holds the, um, the product, the uh, rod and reel cleaner, and it also is a mild abrasive, so if there is something that's a little gummy and stuck there, it does help to get it off. Our handle nut is next. This is a 10 millimeter handle nut. I'd be searching for that on the floor. Okay, then. tighten that down by hand as much as you can. That way you ensure that it doesn't cross strip. And before doing the final tightening of the nut, make sure that your drag is all the way down so that you eliminate the possibility of this binding uh, against the star adjuster when you're putting it in. We got the handle cap goes, screw goes, and we'll give it a test. So we are in, uh, we're in on mode now. There's a clicker is on. So just the spool, nice easy movement. My. Uh, My line counter is working. I want to make sure of that. Go to free spool. Make sure that's free spooling. There's a automatic trip lever. We, 
you turn on this one, make sure that that's working. Make sure the drags are holding. When the drags are holding, back them off for storage when it's not being used. So that's it. This is your Okuma Convector CN20D. It's got a long, round bait casting reel, suitable for ocean and deep lakes, and uh, with a line counter that's used to track where you are in the depth uh, when you're getting those strikes. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, again, please subscribe. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you've been doing to keep us safe. To everybody, please stay well, stay watching, and have a great day fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.